glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. We have come to give God the glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good. Glory. 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 Give him all the glory. Glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good to me. Welcome to the Luke, St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. This is Pastor Chapel. I am delighted that you have joined us for worship on this day. I trust that you can encounter God here and now in ways that change your life. Be blessed as you worship with us today. I'm glad to have you. We go now to worship. What a friend we have in Jesus.
morning and bless the name of the Lord. I greet you in the matchless and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ this morning. It's good to be alive, good to be in the house of the Lord, and good to gather with you even in this virtual way. I trust that the Lord has been good to you. I trust that you've been good to the Lord. I trust that life has been good to you, and I trust that you have been good to life. Uh, behold, how good and pleasant the word of the Lord says for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Uh, this morning I'm going to uh, plug into one of the historic traditions of preaching in the African American church. I'm going to look at a social issue and I'm going to tether it to the word of the Lord. I'm going to tether the word of the Lord to a social issue. Now, uh, in the body politic of American society, we continue with this debate regarding immigration. Now, um, anybody who is plugged in to the various discourses in uh, America right now, especially the uh, political and the political theory and the philosophical and social discourses, we all understand why uh, there is this keen effort on the part of uh, certain uh, American bastions of power uh, to limit uh, immigration, despite the fact that everyone on American soil, for the most part, uh, is an immigrant uh, when you move beyond the uh, Native American community. Um, it is a political issue. It is a political issue. We don't want America to be browned and blacked to the extent that we become a minority and lose power uh, lest they treat us when they become most powerful as we have treated them. For me that's kind of the crux interpretum, the bottom rock analysis uh, that stands in the backdrop of this uh, political debate. So this morning, at least for myself, as I look at the word of the Lord, I'm drawing a line in the sand as to how I envision that scripture speaks to the issue of immigration. Not me, though I bring a particular uh, socio-political and social-cultural understanding to the word. Uh, I want the word, uh, as much as is possible, to be turned loose and uh, speak for itself. I'm looking at the book of Genesis, Genesis the 12th chapter. Uh, forgive me for uh, that uh, prolegomena. Those beginning words is what that means. Uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1. That's all I'm reading. Genesis, the 12th chapter, verse 1. And it reads in this fashion. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, the Lord said unto Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. The secret is out. The secret is out. The secret is out. Let's pray. Gracious God, we always enter into this preaching moment, uh, a worshiping moment with fear and trepidation. Though we come with joy and anticipation, we never know what your word will set loose in our lives and in our faith. So, Lord, what we ask is that you would speak. Let not our humanities get into heaven's way when we come to this moment. Anoint us afresh, our ears, our speaking our conversation. This we pray in thy son's name. Amen and amen. The secret is out. I am a fan.
fan of the television series, uh, don't judge me, it's called The Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory. It's main characters are Penny and her boys, as I like to say. They're Sheldon and Raj and Leonard and Howard. Uh, all of uh, the boys are doctors of some scientific order. I recently caught an episode of The Big Bang Theory uh, wherein Howard and his wife Bernadette were on their way uh, to see Bernadette's parents. Howard was on his way to uh, share in some time with his in-laws. Now, there is a stereotypical and, of course, comedic and tense relationship between Howard and Bernadette's father. Get this, get this. Bernadette's father is portrayed as a man's man. He likes hunting and fishing. He is rough and curt and uh, portrayed as being very intimidating when he barks out his words. Uh, Howard, on the other end, is, get this, stereotypically portrayed as a pampered and nerdy mama's boy. He wears, uh, even as an adult, um, Superman and Batman underwear. Um, unlike his father-in-law, Howard does not like hunting, does not like fishing, and when he speaks, he stammers in high pitches and goofily asserts his opinions. And in the presence of his father-in-law, a man's man, Howard backs down, stumbles, loses his confidence, and is greatly intimidated. In the episode that I watched, in this episode, as they are getting ready to go see uh, Bernadette's parents. Uh, Bernadette feels the need to prepare Howard for this encounter uh, with her father. And so uh, Bernadette gives Howard the honey don't list. The honey don't list. There are a lot of things that you can do in the presence of my father, but there are some things you should not do, and what you should not do is mention anything about religion and politics, and certainly don't say anything about immigration. Well, you can imagine where the plot line of this television sitcom goes. As soon as Howard gets comfortable and situated in the house, uh, what does he do? He mentions the word immigration and his father-in-law goes ballistic and uh, they have to do a lot to uh, recover the drama and the bombs and the landmines that have been triggered in this household. Uh, as Leonard was encouraged by his wife not to speak that provocative package of cultural no-nos, that driving, dividing debate, and that icy, igniting intersection of religion and politics and immigration. I want you to know that this passage stands that sentiment on its head, and this passage from Genesis says, you better buckle up and uh, put on your seatbelt and get ready for seeing and understanding how the Lord, not the Democratic Party, how, how the Lord, not the Republican Party, how the Lord, uh, not the independence in American society, but, but in the Old Testament, in the, in the Hebrew canon of Scripture, uh, it says to us, buckle up because the Lord has drawn a line in the sand and the heavens declare where God is 
on this immigration issue. I don't care how you twist it. I don't care how you hermeneuticize it. I don't care uh, the lens, the spin that you put on it. Um, implicitly and explicitly, um, this passage in Genesis draws a line in the sand of our cultural debate. Uh, and it was no debate for God. You don't see heaven encountering uh, God speaking one thing and the angels speaking another thing. You don't get that in this passage. When you get this in this passage, when you look at this passage of scripture, um, it seems as though heaven, uh, as we can faithfully envision it, uh, has the, the angels high-fiving one another, walking around, talking about, look at God. Look at, look at God bringing his people together. What becomes a barrier and what is used to separate us and, and, and the spins on discourse that we uh, use and employ and launch like grenades in the public sphere of conversation. Heaven says, notice what God is trying to do. Um, God is trying to bridge the gap of our humanities and get us together. Um, I know that's a tough thing for us to do, kind of like in the state of Alabama, being Southerners, knowing the long history of the way that we have invented stuff. Um, you do know race is a social construction. There is no such thing as race. I, I, hope, I hope you know that now. Um, uh, race is a social construction that was devised uh, um, 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 centuries ago. And it was devised when Europe was um, coming out of the bubonic plague. And they decided to do uh, what they're doing now. And that's to go all over the world and seize and conquer the world. But when they sought to seize and conquer the world, they ran into peoples that did not look like them. And so, in order to justify um, sociopolitically and socioculturally and religiously, in order to justify the seizing of lands and the seizing of resources and the enslavement of people of which our ethnic tribe was enslaved, um, they came up with these racial constructions and typologies, but ain't no such thing as race. There, there is ethnicity, there is tribe, there, there is nationality. Um, thank you, Henry Louis Gates, for helping us to understand that um, if I cut you, there's no telling what I might see in your blood. You may think, uh, did you get that uh, scene uh, once when Henry Louis Gates um, told um, an Anglo-American actress um, the percentage of her blood that was African. Did you see it? She almost fainted because her family had never acknowledged it, never explored it, never even thought about it. Um, this passage becomes a lightning rod in the midst of our public debate as we seek to separate ourselves from one another and separate ourselves from God. Um, to separate ourselves from others is not God-like um, um, uh, because uh, God, um, get this, I, I know it's mind-boggling in its simplicity, but God made us all. Uh, that's why in the African-American tradition there's a song that we sung when, when I was a kid, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Let's, let's look at this passage. This passage it would be problematic to the races. It would be problematic to the supremacists. Um, it would be problematic to the nationalists. Um, it will be uh, problematic to those African Americans who have drunk the tea, mm, who have drunk the tea of typologies and drunk the tea of classism and, 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 and drunk the tea of a kind of politic that says, I look out for myself and my family. Um, when I think, therefore, I am. Um, I, I, I look out for myself and nobody else. Well, this passage of scripture that comes 
from the word of the Lord. Don't judge me. Don't hate me. Don't write me. Don't text me. Text God. Text the text. Because the text shows that God perhaps holds a different way of thinking than we do. Um, so, so Leonard is encouraged, or Howard, I should say, is encouraged by his wife, Bernadette, not to speak out of this provocative package of cultural no-nos. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. And in this instance, she said, don't talk about immigration. But look at Genesis 12 with me. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm reading it wrong. Um, God steps to the mic and declares from Genesis 12, get this now, um, Genesis 12 shows God, as it were, stepping to the mic and declaring that I'm on the side of the immigrant. That, it's as simple as that. The text shows that God is on the side of the immigrant. N listen to verse 1 of this 12th, past, 12th chapter of the book of Genesis. Now the Lord, um, uh, right, right, right then and there, a whole lot of folk are uh, going to be mad with God. Um, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to a land that I will show you. Uh, we understand that it was a land that was not a part of the ancestry of his people. The Lord is saying to Abram, uh, my brother, I, I need you and your family to have a Marvin Gaye moment. You've got to give it up. You've got to, you've got to give up securities. You, you, you have to give up uh, 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 things that you uh, have acquired uh, over the years. You'll be able to take some things, but you won't be able to take everything. Um, you will have to leave some folk behind. In other words, get this. It is the Lord that pushes Abram and his family spirit out of their house, out of their neighborhood, out of their town, out of their country, and away from their securities. They are pushed out of the familiar, and guess who is pushing them? It is God. This is a safe fact from the passage. It's God's hand that's at their back. Listen to the passage again. Now the Lord says to Abram, Go! Um, the Lord, uh, as the Lord uh, speaks, uh, he impresses upon, stirs up, directs, and when he speaks, uh, 10,000 angels, as it were, rejoice. Uh, the angels know that the Lord is up to something. He's about to break down some barriers. Um, it is not in the spirit of of the Lord to construct barriers. Um, it is the Spirit of God to tear down barriers and strongholds and biases and discourses that keep us separated. This country has long uh, tossed and turned in the middle of the day uh, because the country has been founded on a principle uh, that is antithetical to the way that heaven sees things. And um, God is doing some pushing. Uh, the angels see that God is up to something good. They rejoice because they know that uh, possibility and not punishment rests at the base note of your transition. The angels rejoice because they understand that your present reality is not your only reality. The angels would rejoice uh, when God speaks to us. When God spoke to Abraham, uh, the angels would rejoice because hope will be a part of your heart. Yes, it is God. Get this. Uh, that dreaming that you are doing, that, that vision board that you are constructing, uh, God has set in motion, the need for you to journey and move beyond your space. And you know how it is. Um, there is a part of the humanity of some of us uh, that is willing to.
stay in place. Uh, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I, I don't want anything new. I just want to wake up every morning and I want to see the world as I have seen the world. Um, this passage um, challenges us to see beyond our locales. This, this passage uh, would challenge us to understand that the world is big and God is bigger and uh, some of the blessings that you have now do not compare to the blessings that you will have if you move out, uh, go forward, um, get beyond, um, step out, um, uh, 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 get ahead, um, 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 forge a new path, do something different, see the world through somebody else's eyes. No, uh, the world is not built on parochial vision, just seeing what's in front of me. God has created a vast universe and, 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 and creation is big and wide and God has made it all. And I guess this passage would say that for some folk, for some folk, I'm, I'm not arguing that it is for everybody because um, you've got to have some courage uh, to venture out. Um, uh, um, I, 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 I rethink the discourse that uh, we speak around Christopher Columbus. Uh, he discovered America. Uh, we long understand that that is inappropriate language. How can you discover something that is already inhabited? Um, we can say that um, Christopher Columbus journeyed the seas and the oceans and he stumbled upon some of the places. There was a quote with regard to Columbus that says, Imagine if Columbus had listened to the Queen and thought indeed that the world was flat. Mm, that's a that's an interesting spin um, to uh, place on this passage as a way of understanding what God did. This uh, God wakes Abraham up. God disturbs Abraham in the middle of the night. I know what your parents are saying. Don't take their job. It's too far away. Um, I, I, I know what your friends are saying. We've been partners for, for a long time. I cannot exist without you. Don't go to school out there. Don't move there. Don't take that job. Um, aren't you aware that your spirit is bigger than your locale. Um, have you ever had that sense within yourself? I hope I'm, I hope I'm preaching and talking and in conversation with somebody this morning. Uh, there's something in your spirit that just awakens you to uh, there's more in this life than what well, that's all that God was saying to Abraham is that there is more than what you see. And by my grace, I'm going to push you there. I'm going to get you out. I, I want you to move ahead. Um, I did some research on this passage, um, um, and uh, it's interesting that when you look at this passage, it is from the Old Testament. The Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew, so I pulled out some Hebrew resources, um, and um, I discovered that um, these first words to Abram, his name has not been changed to Abraham, uh, these first words to Abram from God are in case in Hebrew language uh, that speaks to mystery and how you meet God in the midst of mystery. Notice what the passage says. Um, get the act from this place um, uh, from your father's house and from your neighborhood and, and from your country and I will show you. Didn't give him a road map. Uh, uh, um, he doesn't have an address where uh, he can go to Google Maps. Um, um, he can uh, 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 check Waze to see what the journey, Waze to see what the journey ahead is about. The passage uh, in Hebrew language um, is written in a way that it speaks to the midst 
mystery of how God can meet you along the way in surprising ways. And I don't know about you. I'm about to close. I'm about to close right now. I may come back to this next week. Um, but what I want to say is that uh, when God moves you and when God wants you to get ahead, um, does he always tell you what's ahead of you? No. What God says is trust me. Um, because sometimes if God gives us a seriatim list of things to see and places to go. Some of us will fort our journey and we will miss those things that God has for us. Uh, however, when God stirs you up and God wants you to move ahead and when God is in charge of your life and, and when God wants you to have more, when, when God has stirred within you a progressive spirit, an open spirit, a yearning spirit, when God wakes you up in the middle of the night and reaffirms and confirms and reconfirms what he shows you during the day, God says, I need you to follow me because what you will discover is that I will work with you. He told Abram, I will bless you and bless those um, who bless you and, and stay with me and journey with me because um, I've got some place for you to go. And uh, along the way, oh yes you will, you will be blessed. Surprise! Um, caught off guard. You will see grace. You will see God open doors that no one can close. Uh, and then the secret will be out. That uh, God is on the side of the immigrant. Side of the one. Who leaves home. Leaves neighborhood. Leaves country, leaves securities, and marches to the place where God says, I'll show you. No, don't take this as an exit. Keep on journey. There's some more exits you have to pass before I tell you this is the place. Pull on off. Let's continue the journey. Um, where is it that the Lord would lead you? Um, how is this textual passages take on being an immigrant, leaving where you are and getting to another place well beyond where you are? Uh, is this passage speaking to your life? Is the Lord trying to get you to go someplace? Is the, is the Lord trying to... Uh, Bless you more uh, than he has, uh, than God has previously. Um, let's pray with you. Let's journey with you. Let's uh, be in wise, holy conversation so that you can discern what it is that the Lord is doing with you. Follow us to the end of this worship experience. There is a prayer to pray. There is a number to call. I would delight in journeying with you. We would delight in journeying with you. And now, may the God of grace and the God of glory on God's people pour his power so that when you wake up in the morning, you'll wake up with joy in your heart. Should hard times come, you might be able to say like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Then might you also be able to say, Calvary shows me that what leaves me for dead, God is able to use it to pick me up, set me on. A brand new journey to this God be all power, glory, and dominion. Now and forevermore. Come on and say it with me. Amen. Come on. Amen. And amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today. I'm always delighted to offer the gift of salvation and community through St. Luke Amy Zion Church. If you are one searching for answers, if you are one in need of support, if you are one who is searching for salvation, a relationship with God under the banner of those known to follow Jesus Christ, follow us to the end of this broadcast. We would welcome your giving us a call. Pastor Chapel, Reverend C., St. Luke Amy Zion Church, we are a great people to affirm your life, wherever you are. For those of you who continue to contribute your fiscal resources to our congregation, I say thank you. During the pandemic, it has been a tough time for churches financially. We have been blessed by your giving, and I invite you to continue to give and to support this ministry. St. Luke Birmingham, that is our moniker on GiveLify. St. Luke Birmingham, St. Luke Amy Zion Church, Birmingham. You're also welcome to drop your contributions by St. Luke and those within the Birmingham area. You are also welcome to mail them to us. Follow us to the end of the broadcast and you will see our address. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Be safe. Wear that mask. Remain vigilant. We have come to give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. We have come to give God the glory. He has been so good to so good, so good, so good, glory, 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 give him all the glory, glory, he has been so good too, so good, so good, so good. To me!